The purpose of this video is to show you what it's like to align use and build it. The workflow that we'll be using is the alignment of three cylinders. The first cylinder will be leveled, the second will be made parallel, and the third one will be made concentric to the first. If you'd like to jump to any section, click on any of them to jump to the part that interests you. This workflow starts by first creating a new file, adding a device, and recording your level plane. The record level plane command creates both a level plane and a coordinate system, but in this workflow we'll only need the coordinate system, so we'll hide the plane. Now that we have our level plane, we're going to go into record cylinder. So we'll bring the probe to the cylinder and start taking measurements. First on one side, and you can see there's a preview that appears live, and then on the other side. Not only do you see a mesh preview, but you can also see the max deviation and RMS error, as well as the cylinder city. If you're happy with the results, you simply hit accept, and then you annotate the cylinder. You're going to put a distance annotation from the start point to the end point, and we're going to display only the X and the Z deviation. We can see that the largest deviation is in the Z direction. We're going to change the orientation of the cylinder so that we have a nominal cylinder to work with. By setting the orientation such that it's purely in the J direction, we have a level cylinder as a nominal. And so, by opening the Inspect Geometry command, we can look at the deviation of the cylinder's position. On one end, we see a deviation of 34 thou, which is basically what's in the annotation. Now we start moving the cylinder while keeping the probe on the top part of it and we can see the deviations go down. Notice that we provide real-time deviation values both numerically as well as graphically with the arrows. You can also see the numbers turn green when you get within tolerance. Once we get close enough to zero, we'll bring our probe to the other side just to see if the deviations are also quite low and they seem good enough. So, at this point, we've aligned our cylinder and we want to record the result. First, we're going to hide this cylinder that we modified and then we're going to record the actual cylinder. So again, we start measuring on one side and we get this live feedback of the fit. Once we have enough samples, we accept it, and we can add another annotation of the distance between one endpoint of rule number two and the other endpoint. As we can see the annotation, we have much better results. Now to the second step of the workflow, which is aligning a second cylinder so that it's parallel to the first one. Just like before, we're going to use record shape cylinder to get the current alignment and position of the cylinder. We're also going to add an annotation, giving us the X and the Z deviations. It can be interesting to note that the measurements used for the cylinder are always kept in build it, and they're put into no-show, as you can see. You can always access them la later on to fit your cylinder once again, or perhaps to remove some of the points that you took by accident. Now we're going to adjust the alignment of this cylinder just like before, by setting the I and the K direction values. And then we'll use the inspect geometry command once again, giving us deviations both graphically and numerically. And as we move the cylinder, we see the deviations go down. Once we're happy with the alignment, once again we lock it into position. We'll hide the modified cylinder, and we'll record another cylinder for the new alignment. 
Now this time we'd like to show another way of recording the endpoints. Let's say your tracker doesn't reach both sides of the roll. You have to measure one side first and then have your tracker on the other side to measure the other side of the roll. And build it, you can use your measurements to later fit your cylinder. First what we'll do instead is record circles. This will allow you to record a thin slice of the roll and obtain the center. We first start, start by measuring the plane and then we'll measure the circle which will be projected on the plane and then we'll calculate the center point. Now notice the measurements that we took for the circle are also in no show so I'm going to put them in show just to show you. Now at this point we're going to create an annotation with a distance between the two center points and we'll have the new results for the alignment. And just for demonstration purposes, we'll use the points that we took earlier for the circles and we're going to create a cylinder with it. It's entirely your choice if you want to use the center point of the circles or the end points of the cylinder. Now onto the third step of the workflow. To make a cylinder concentric to the first one, we not only need to take into account the orientation, but also the position of the active coordinate system. So we're going to translate the level coordinate system such that its y-axis is aligned with the cylinder. Again, just like before, we use the record shape cylinder command. And again, we get the nice feedback of the current fit with the live mesh preview. And also the cylindricity and the RMS error that comes with the fit. At this point, we're going to create a different kind of annotation which is the point-to-curve annotation. It's the distance between the endpoints and the axis of the first cylinder. And again, we only need two components, the X and the Z components. We can see that the cylinder has large deviations. So at this point, we're going to modify the cylinder to use it with inspect geometry. But we're not only going to modify its orientation, but also its position. So we're going to set X and Z to be zero, as well as I and K. Now, just like before, we use the inspect geometry command and we bring our probe up to the cylinder and we move the cylinder so that the deviation goes down to zero. We do the same thing on the other side. We verify on both sides that the deviations are small. And once we feel that we're aligned, we fix the position of the cylinder. Again, just like before, we're going to hide these and we're going to create a new cylinder. So we open the record shape cylinder command and we take our measurements. Notice also that you don't need to measure the cylinder all around. Just a small portion of it will give it enough information to fit the whole cylinder. And that makes this command more convenient. Now at this point, we need to create new annotations to show the end result. So again, we click on the end point and the curve. And we can see a large improvement. And now at this point, I'd like to put a point coordinates annotation. This annotation gives the coordinate of the, the start point of every cylinder. You can notice that the coordinates in the annotations are in the active coordinate system. However, if you have a baseline coordinate system, you can create it and set it as active and you'll see that the annotations are going to update on their own. Now we're ready to create a report. So in Evaluate Reports, we're going to use the Geometry Information Report. This report provides the 
position as well as the orientation of the selected geometries. So this is the report. We see we have a header, we have a screenshot, and we also have geometry information. We selected three rows and we can have the position of its start point, its end point, its diameter, and as well as its length.